And the facet we're going to focus on is the one in the middle structure. And structure is one of those words that uh, is a really interesting word. Um, and so is leadership, for that matter. I mean, uh, it, it's very interesting, the, the, the sort of the reaction we get. Um, I don't know, you see that dot on the screen? See that dot? You ever been a dot? <laughs> you, you ever been in an organization where, like, it's all coming at you, kind of uh, like that? How does it feel? It's pretty awful. Uh, have you ever tried to work with a dot? Uh, that's not so great either. <laughs> now, it's really interesting because it's a very problematic thing, and especially it happens a lot in volunteer organizations, and then people say, well, nobody will help me, or um, oh, I'm so burned out. Well, why? Well, nobody, well, did you ask people? Well, no. There's this, this problem of, be, of being able to see leadership as something more than one person telling everybody what to do and, and trying to make everything work all by themselves. Does that resonate at all with folks? Now, sometimes we react to that so strongly, and that kind of a, a constraining structure, dysfunctional structure, that we um, go over here. We don't need that. We don't need that dot. In fact, we don't need any dots. In fact, we don't need leadership. In fact, we don't need structure at all. You ever had that experience? Does that work great? Joe Freeman, a feminist sociologist uh, in the 70s, wrote a piece called The Tyranny of Structurelessness, in which he talks about the fact that human beings, when they get together, they structure themselves. And it's either going to be visible, accountable, transparent, and, and you know, uh, open, or it's going to happen anyway, but it'll be factions, personalities, uh, lack of accountability, who's really dis does that sound familiar at all? Well, see, it doesn't have to be one or the other. And what we've been working with uh, in recent years has been an alternative, which is thinking in terms of leadership as a team project. Now, this problem, this challenge that I'm talking about is not, not a new challenge. Um, you know, we ask people to do advanced reading. I don't know if folks here got that. I know folks out, out there in the world got it. Um, did you get notice of a reading? Uh, yeah, the uh, Exodus 18? Yeah, see, the reason I ask people to read that story from, from the Bible is not, this is not Bible class tonight, but this problem that I'm describing, it's been around for a long time. <laughs> and this particular problem, the account in this story, is about Moses, uh, who has always been interesting to me because he's, He's a Jew who was an Egyptian. He was of the oppressed, raised in the house of the oppressor. Uh, it creates an identity issue for him. Uh, he struggles with it. Uh, so there's a lot to learn from his struggles. Uh, and uh, in this particular struggle, he's sort of halfway through his journey, and his father-in-law comes to visit uh, and shows up, and shows up with his wife and his two kids, uh, and uh, says, hey, Moses' uh, wife, two kids here, just want to remind you a little bit about that. Uh, and then he stays and watches while Moses goes to work the next morning. And the description is that Moses is sitting on the, ra on the ground, and the people are towering over him with, with questions and questions. And then Jethro, his wise father-in-law, says, hey, Moses, this, uh, this isn't working. Uh, this is not good for you, and it's not good for the people. Um, you're going you're gonna to burn yourself out. So you've got to do something different. Well, what does he ask Moses to do different? It's pretty interesting. First thing, you can't be the only one that knows the law. You've got to, you got to educate the people. they got to know. You've got to share it. You can't hold it all here. Secondly, you can't try to do it all yourself. You've got to find out if every, then it was ten men, one to make decisions with respect to the other nine, and then one of those ten and one of those ten, so that only the stuff that cannot be dealt with comes to you. And you have to give them the authority. And, and he said, he wasn't looking for experts who'd been to the Kennedy School. He said people of respect, uh, people uh, who, uh, who were respectful, who respected God. Uh, and uh, third, you have to actually give them the authority to make decisions. Uh, you can't just hold it all yourself. <clears throat> Moses does it. 
Jethro makes his reputation as the first management consultant in history, <laughs> uh, is it Jethro LLC or whatever. Uh, but uh, but it, it is so interesting that this problem's been around for so long. And so it's time we figured out how to deal with it, how to really deal with it. Uh, and uh, it's interesting because in that story I just shared, the first half of the chapter is all about Jethro restoring uh, his family to him. And it's almost like he has to remind him that he's a human being, that he and his work are not exactly the same. And that his work can have problems, but it's not going to compromise him as a human being because he has a relationship with God, he has a relationship with family. And so he sort of enables Moses to let go. And that's a big part of what this is all about, I think, is developing our own sources of confidence, of trust, of, self, of, of caring for ourselves, that we're able then to interact with others and share leadership and not hold on to it.